You're just too darn loud. Next, please. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. great. That was insane, guys. That was awesome. I awesome. didn't know I could play like that. I had to put it on video. <laughs> I want to. I want to see where, where you, next time you grow your hair out like that, Joe Brett. You got it. I want to see pictures. Well, I, I had to return it to the store. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. Well, we need to start off by saying thank you to Vern Six for the fifty dollars super chat. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thank you very Holy much. cow! And I'm going to step out of the driver's seat. Daniel, it is your show. Take it away, my friend. No, I loved it, man. You you take over. <laughs> I don't like talking, right? Well, yeah, Anyways, right. <laughs> guys, I'm so excited. I've been excited since last. Joe Brett messaged us on the Discord saying, check this guy out. I shot him an email, and we're like, okay, whatever. Well, he responded. He's a fellow ham and an amazing guitarist, and he's here tonight with us. He's sitting in the green room, so we're going to make this a quick roundtable introduction this morning, just see, or this evening, sorry, uh, and just see how everybody's doing and how their week was, and then we're just going to get right into it. JB, Joe Brett. Hey, what's up? What's going on, man? Oh, you're first, buddy. Introduction. I'm Joe Brett, K5YVY. You may have seen some shorts from me today. Anyway, go, go ahead, Izzo. You I got mean, a little carry away with that, didn't you? Yeah, I figured I probably should uh, maybe do a weekly or a monthly thing. Not all, not the entire month on the first day. Sometimes I get excited. You had a good week, though, man. Yes, I had a good week. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Nothing special. <laughs> no, it's All been right. a busy, insanely busy. I've been trying to get this video. I got this long form video they call it. You know, twenty plus minutes. I've got like thirty minutes, um, <laughs> and I was really wanting to get it out this week. And we had something Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I had work like crazy all last week. I'm starting to get snappy, right? I'm like, I got to do this video. And so what I would do pre planning. I recorded a little bit here, recorded a segment here, recorded a segment there. Now I go to put it back together. I'm like, none of this crap makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, but other than that, great that week. <laughs> Izzo, what's going on with you, man? I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> um, I thought he was going to start off with whale shit. <laughs> yeah, well, shit. Let me tell you something. I got bit, I got bit by the COVID monster. Oh, hope you're feeling better. Uh, believe it or not, about 30 minutes ago, I was outside blowing the leaves. I just to go outside. It's so cool outside. Mm. It's it it feels great outside. No cigars, obviously, for a while now. It's going to be a while. We got to get better. We're on day two. It's like the freight train hit me, but I wanted to be here tonight just to put a smile on my face. I stole my son's t-shirt <laughs> and it's real quickly i'm like matthew i gotta have a black rock and roll t-shirt i'm like you got any rush you got any van halen you got any sticks you got any fog hat and he's looking at me he's like i got the rolling stones I'm like, okay. work. i said where's your acdc he says i don't know he says you want some sublime you want then he's naming bands that i don't even know and I could feel the gray hair coming out because I don't know this stuff. And I'm like, but wait a minute. I was a serious rocker in the 70s and the 80s. And what has happened to me? You got but old, to, buddy. But tonight, I feel rejuvenated. <laughs> and I don't care how sick I feel. Somehow, I feel rejuvenated tonight. And I don't know if this shirt makes me look fat or is it just letting the muscles just kind of bulge. But I don't <clears> care if there's a hey, black round, rock. Round is a shape, buddy. Own it. At, let me tell you something. If you guys remember, and I'll keep it one last comment. If you guys remember going back to the I famous college. Yes, you do. Shut up, you. All right, Joe Brett, you're old like me. Um, yeah, but I wasn't listening. <laughs> Dan you Daniel, Daniel, you're old like me. In Canada, I'm sure you guys what? had the college. I'm sure you had the Coliseum and the places to go. What was the first thing when you got to the show? You bought a black T-shirt, and you made sure you wore it the next day to school. Listen, Izzo, all I got to say to you is this week I was on TikTok, and I saw a video. Oh, man, I, I downloaded the app again. It's the worst decision I ever made. Absolutely. It, is. I found, it was 3 o'clock in the morning. My <laughs> wife is in bed sleeping, and I'm You're like. Giggling. <laughs> 
I saw a video and it was these guys in New York. It was like little Italy in New York, you know, and you have the, like the typical guy sitting back just, you know, with his accent. I was man, this guy makes me think of Izzo. And it was a, it was a TikTok saying that uh, when you live in little Italy, but you don't speak Italian, you know, and then it goes to the guy beside him and he's like, well, but the baby, and he's talking. The other guy's like, ha ha ha. And he doesn't understand a damn thing. I got to find it and send it to you. Do you speak Italian, Izzo? Uh, just a couple words. See, perfect example. <laughs> and so, man, at least you don't oh. live in Little Italy. <laughs> uh, why? I was about to say, I don't think there's an Italy in Connecticut. Excuse me, that kitchen, that you know who she was. That kitchen was a little bit Italian and a little bit of Irish. <laughs> right? And trust me, a lot of good food came out of there, Daniel. Wow. Oh, she's she's giving you a look right now. <laughs> <laughs> she might Shame. make you probably a she choice might, finger or two. She, she might make you a plate now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Sit down. Uh, a little plate of kick ass, right? That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It, Shane, how you doing, man? What was your um, week like? You know what? I'm glad to be back. It's been a minute. Um, I hate it when work keeps me away from hanging out with my friends. Um, I want to thank Joe Brett for uh, pointing out how I could create these shorts because I, I tossed out a couple of them. And before the show, I was like, you know what? I should go back and see what they're how they're doing. And the oh, most recent go. one's got 1,900 views on it. <laughs> Why do I keep showing you stuff? But all 1,900 views adds up to like 0 .05 watch time on a 16-second video. Shane, so. you know what you got to do? Shane, you got to do a, sh a short of how Joe Brett showed you how to do this. That's true. That's See? true. Well, then everybody on, everybody on YouTube is going to be like, so that's how it works. That's how it works. But the week's so going good. Tomorrow is uh, flight lesson number two in the hot air balloon. So looking forward to that. And I'm thinking nice. I'm going to talk the instructor into letting me film this one. So maybe there'll be some content put on the YouTube channel at some point. Awesome. I feel like Daniel now. <laughs> quick, <laughs> quick tip Never. about the short. Yes. The watch time doesn't count. Of course it doesn't. Your objective is to get them to the full-time video. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, gotcha. my God. Are we going to be chasing certificates next and, and participation <laughs> in the trophies? Can yes. we just have fun, please? Maybe. What about Maybe. you, Daniel? How was your week, and how are you? Uh, week was horrible. I'm horrible. That's great. And that's pretty right, much then. it. So, no, I'm good. It was a great week. Uh, nothing special sticks out. Work, life, you know, the normal. So and no videos. And then you're here <clears> on Tuesday. <throat> It's been nine long months since I posted a video. Nope. So that's it. <laughs> Nothing special. Um, man, I wish I had some embarrassing story to tell you guys, but I don't. I don't. You can make one up. There's nothing from the archives? <laughs> All I think about is yes, cow. there is. <laughs> They're not rated for this YouTube family-friendly content. I mean, we can go way back to the, uh, to the, uh, to the larceny slash shoplifting from the... <laughs> From the five, from the we five don't want to go to the, We don't want to go we to the criminal. Go, we don't want to go oh, to you criminal. know what? I got, I got something for you. I shared it in the clubhouse. <laughs> there, I was on YouTube. You know, I get so many suggestions. I'm watching this like um, cop impersonator get arrested, right? And this guy, he gets pulled over. He's got a badge. He's got all these things. And like, I'm like, this guy's such. Oh my goodness, these people who impersonate cops. You know, do you think reporting for duty? <clears throat> And they're like, so who do you work for? He's like, oh, I work for, uh, you know, emergency, you know. He's like, oh, yeah, and they give you the police scanner? He's like, yeah, yeah. And what's this radio here? And then they're going on asking questions, and every time they ask him more, he keeps on reducing and, you know, like changing his story. Finally, they're like, who, who do you work for? He's like, Racy's. <laughs> I'm like, it just... I'm like, man, it just had to be a ham radio operator. Like, you know, like the yeah, craziest. Like, <laughs> like the guy's got the badge. He's got the belt buckle thing. He's got the pepper spray. He's got the computer in his car. He's got the <laughs> side with the lights. I work for Racy's. And I was just like, man, this is exactly what makes us look like idiots, right? <laughs> hey, Molson Molson. Rant. That's right. Yeah, Molson. we've been reading one of these for yeah. a while. So there's, one on. thing, there's one thing that video did not show. What's that? <laughs> the other people that he got in trouble. Because oh. of the radio that he was using to yeah. program those frequencies, you have to have a key and you have to have a be approved for that programming key. Mm. Oh. So he's he had an inside man mm. that done some programming that shouldn't have done some programming for him. Ah, interesting. And, you know, and then, and then, and then I, I look up the guy, I find his license. I'm like, man, he's even using like a 15, 20 year old picture on his QRZ page. <laughs> Uh -oh, man, of you know, like, because uh, yeah, the guy doesn't look anything. And his QRZ picture was like, I don't know, it was like me 20 years ago, you know, 100 pounds lighter. Yeah, so I was like, oh, anyways, whatever. 
you find that a lot of on on TikTok and Tinder. <laughs> That's I don't know, Don. Just, just keep on swiping. Just keep scrolling. <laughs> Anyways, guys, enough about us. Uh, we got Max Carlisle, Guitar Max here. Let's bring him on, and there's so much to talk about. So, Max, hold on. There you go. Welcome to the Ham Radio Clubhouse, man. Hey, guys. Thanks very much. It's great to be here. Welcome to awesome. Ham Radio. <laughs> This is what so, gets you in the mess. I was about to say, where do we start? Because uh, there's so much to cover. I, I guess mean, we'll I get agree. the we'll get the ham radio stuff out of the way first, because that's probably what people are mostly. What? So I know. Can I start? Oh, go ahead, Joe Brett. Okay, let me let me I'll start because I got to get this out of the way it's because the Joe Brett show. there's going to be some other YouTubers that may see this and they're going to be like, "You need to call yourself out, son." So I'm going to call <laughs> myself out, Max. When I first come across your video, like sometimes I'll waste time at work. Um, sitting at my desk, <laughs> multitasking, and I'm watching YouTube. Work, working. And I come across your video. I think somebody posted it in one of our chats. And I was like, okay, and I looked at it. Now, it was it was a little uh, slow-paced, uh, you know, a little bit. And that says a lot. It's from yeah. Mississippi. And my attention span did not stick to it, okay? Sure, yeah. So I went on with some other stuff. And then somebody else posted it in one of the chats and uh, with some of the YouTubers. And I was like, yeah, I couldn't watch that thing, man. It, it's like, <laughs> it was, I said, it's one camera angle. He's just, it's like a guy sitting there at the, you know, the professor at school just <laughs> explaining stuff. And somebody was like, did you really watch that? And so while I was at home, I went and I watched it again. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, oh shit, what did I miss? For one, listen to the guy's audio. You use the same audio in all your YouTube channels. It's amazing. It's great. Uh, you actually did use a lot of different angles, zoomed in on what you was talking about, and uh, okay. Max, <laughs> I really enjoyed your video, man. <laughs> but I, I got to get that out in there because you know, you I, don't want some, better? I don't want somebody else to call me out. <laughs> you feel better oh. now? You're your confessional? Yes. <laughs> that's, oh, that's, so that's, that's why that's I emailed you to come on the show so I can tell you personally. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, if, if people make it through the first 30 seconds, I consider that a win. Exactly. Yeah. I'm the same way. Joe yes. Brett experiences that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You should see my click through rates. <laughs> Maybe I should make a short so that all those Maybe views will go to your short channel. Of how to do that. <laughs> Wait so, for so, the finger. So, Max, you got so many things that you're involved in, like chains that we're going to touch on them, but somehow along your journey, so we're going to go backwards, I think. Somehow along your journey of excitement, you know, music, everything else you do, aviation, you decided to become Hammer Radio Operator, man. Yeah. What's the deal? How did that happen? What brought you into that? Yeah, well, I, I think really, I don't know, there's two or three things that went into it. But I mean, a big one is just that a lot of the things I'm already doing and that I've been doing for a long time are loosely related to radio stuff and either aviation obviously you're using vhf radios in the plane and uh, i do a ton of just audio stuff already either with video editing or with uh, music and uh and i kind of you know when i was a kid i i my dad was an electrical engineer and you know he was like the guy who could explain to you how a vacuum tube works and that kind of stuff. So I mm. just very early on, I had Man, I'm a lot jealous of, of that one. Uh, I, I, I had a lot of, um, I don't know. I, I just, um, exposure to electronics and that kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And I had a, a thing when I, I, I want to say, I don't remember exactly how old I was, but I want to say I was like 11, 12, 13, like in that age range, uh, there was like a room in our in our house in my, my childhood house where we'd like make model airplanes and this kind of stuff hmm. and we had an old zenith i don't know what model shortwave radio up there i bet Izzo knows that brand yeah <laughs> oh did i, I mean, get you off guard it, it was a big brand you know but but it was a shortwave radio and it's actually still i, I think it's still at my mom's house or something but um anyway so you know, we, we'd be working on an airplane, a model, and then, you know, be tuning the shortwave and seeing if we could pick stuff up. And uh, my dad put a big world map up on the wall. And so anytime we heard like a new place or something, we'd stick a pin in it on the map. Very cool. Kind of stuff. 
Yeah. I did that in my son's room. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a fantastic memory that I have, you know, so right. I, it, um, even though I, I didn't get into actually doing ham radio myself until much, much later. I mean, that had a big impact on me mm -hmm. many, many years later. Right. So really that was kind of the early, uh, the early introduction to it. And then a lot later when I'd gotten into aviation and I, I was at this, I'm trying to think of a simplified way to say that, to, to ex explain this, but basically I was at a meeting and I was watching a presentation that a guy was giving and the guy was giving the presentation about ham radio. And he's an <laughs> older guy. He'd been in, I think uh, he was a radio operator in Vietnam or something like that. He was a veteran. Oh, cool. And he was saying, you know, <clears throat> after he left the military, he still really loved radio. And so he got into the ham radio and he's traveled all around the world and, you know, going to doing different ham radio related things. So he's been in this for like many decades. Right. And so he was giving the presentation. So when I saw that presentation, it kind of reminded me of the stuff I did with my dad as a kid. I'm like, oh, yeah, ham radio. Like I forgot about ham radio. Mm -hmm. and, and then I started thinking about it more and more. I'm like, ah, that's, that's something I should check out. And so I just started, you know, seeing different, um, you know, watching YouTube videos and reading little articles and that kind of stuff. And, I'm, and to be totally honest, I was surprised that it is still such an active community, right? I, mm. you know, I kind of thought that, well, everybody has a cell phone, you know, so it probably lost uh, its popularity over the past few decades, but that doesn't seem to be true at all. Mm. And they just uh, invent a new mode uh, every time. The, every time they get bored, they just invent yeah. a new mode. So now we're using <laughs> FT8. That's what all the cool kids are doing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that that kind of reignited my interest in it, and that was recently, right? I mean, I I think I, what I was talking to you on the email. You know, I'm I'm a very new ham as far as my license, right? Like mm -hmm. just like I don't know, three months at this point, three or four months. I think. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, I, I got into it and, uh, you know, I got I got a, a mobile radio that I rigged up at home and everything. Uh, and I've got a weird antenna set up, which I would love to ask you guys about some advice for apartment antennas. Um, mm. But, yeah, that's I happen to live in an apartment myself. Out. Yeah. And I'm, I'm happy to happy to be involved. in it. That's awesome. So we'll talk more about ham radio, but you talked about when you were younger. So you are really well known for playing guitar, obviously. <laughs> and so tell us, so you started playing guitar as, what was it, uh, 13 years old or young? You, your first band was when you were like 13 or 14, right? Yeah, in my mid-teens, I guess. But before that, I played violin. Yeah. My parents oh, wanted to keep me. Well, I have two, I have two that are under, under, my, under my bed. That were, one was hand-built <laughs> yeah. by my grandfather, yeah. and the other one is like 105 years old that it's been passed down to the family from year wow. to year. And I have them both, and I do not know how to play them. So I sit and look at them, and it's like, oh, they're pretty, and then they go back in the box. One of these days, I'm going to set aside some time to learn it. But the trouble with violin, in my opinion, is that it takes a lot of skill just to get a nice tone. Out of yeah, the yeah, it's, it's a lot like of a scratching right now. Like yeah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, you know, the just the perfect angle of holding the bow and this kind of thing. And there's there's no frets, right? So where right. the note right. just comes Correct. down to your hands. So <clears throat> I have a friend uh, who plays yeah. in an, in an orchestra in Germany, and he's also a flight attendant for Lufthansa. He came over and I I pulled one of the violins out, and he was like, "Oh, let me let me let me do, do this," and then just starts just starts playing. And I was like, yeah. "What?" Amazing, I've been looking at this it? thing for years and didn't know it sounded that good. So. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I played violin to begin with. And, yeah, that was just my parents wanted to keep me out of trouble. So they're like, we'll put him in the orchestra. That'll be great. You know? <laughs> and um, But then I'm like, uh, I, did they I, know? I got bored of, you know, I wanted something with a little bit more excitement. To, so I switched to guitar eventually. And and uh, I've been playing guitar for a very, very long time. And, yeah, I've, I've played in you know, bands and most mostly rock and metal bands, that kind of stuff. Um, but since about, I, I've actually been doing YouTube for a very long time, but I kind of didn't take it seriously for quite a while. So mm. really it's about 2015, 2016 was when I started to do it more like really taking it seriously and trying to be more consistent with it. And um, I've been doing it full time, like as a job since 
2019. That's awesome. Congrats on that. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. And so for, got for everybody that's in the chat and for those that are going to watch it later, links to both the Max's channel are going to be in the description of the video. So make sure you go and subscribe to his channel. we got about 75 people watching. So go awesome. to his Thank channel. You. Those guitar those guitar videos are badass. Just they saying. are. Absolutely. You make Thank a $200 you. guitar, sing. <laughs> sing. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> so so pat's trying to you know he's trying to establish a musical connection with you he says my neighbors love my djing so much they call the police to come listen from time to time that's great yeah yeah, yeah. good job good job pat good job <laughs> i saw a please video about that too <laughs> <laughs> so that's all so so guitar has been your your thing so uh famous question we ask on how many clubhouse what's your favorite band Oh, I mean, it just depends on the mood I'm in. Top I mean, five. Uh, if you had a, if you had like five presets in your vehicle or at home, if you had to say, "Hey, today I feel like listening to," you know, or five different genres. Nickelback. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, I'm, I'm gonna have to cut this short here, guys. I almost <laughs> a little bit in my mouth there, buddy. We have some redemption. We did have a shout out from Joel Hoekstra. Oh, cool. He called and called us all out. Well, we had to pay him to do it, but he called us all out by name. <laughs> nice. I need to find that clip. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Cam top, top Cameo five. buys you good friends, right? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> People say you can't buy good friends. So, Ooh, just watch. Max, what do you like? <laughs> 25 bucks will give me. Max, what do you like? You like something from if you had to say, hey, listen, I feel like listening to uh, go. Let's go deep because you just don't pick up a guitar and just start. Very are very very few people that I know, or or, or have read these these uh, biographies, and all the biographies and documentaries. Who like inspire? Give me give us like five people, three people who inspired you to say, I don't want to play like them, but they're still my inspiration to, mm. you know. Okay, well, an early inspiration was Angus Young from mm -hmm. ACDC. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because he's a great combination of a blues, like blues, hard rock, metal. I mean, sure. depending on the album you're listening to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they can span quite a few different genres. So he was an early inspiration. There's a couple guitar players that are pretty, pretty obvious guys for guitar players, but it's because the first time I heard them, I didn't think what they were doing was possible. You know, I thought it was some kind of studio tricks or something like that. And so Eddie Van Halen, of course. Mm -hmm. And then Ingve Malmsteen was the other one where I'm like, no, that that's something they must have programmed on a keyboard, right? That's not really real. Yes. Mm -hmm. So those guys were sort of um, opened my ears to other other style, not other styles, but just of what the guitar was capable of as an instrument. Right. right. Then there's a, a ton of other guys. There's this whole guitar players talk about the shrapnel era in the '80s because mm -hmm. there was a record label called Shrapnel Records. They released a bunch of like instrumental guitar albums and this was all just really flashy guitar work and so you've got guys like marty friedman who went on to be in megadeth later on or jason becker tony mcalpine greg howe guys like this and so they, they range from metal to sort of fusion type players mm -hmm. um and again just very very you know virtuosos you know very technically mm -hmm. advanced players and that kind of stuff and so those are the people that still today inspire me but it always has to have a strong melody to it mm -hmm. and in, an instrumental song that gets stuck in your head for me is like that's where it's at mm, i hear you i hear you yeah that's awesome so once it go back so what's your top five favorite bands so typically the, I'll, I'll give you a little secret here when we talk bands we really we always trick and say we're not talking about musical bands we're talking about radio bands but ham radio you know, bands are. it's it's a it's a it's a bad dad joke you know but <laughs> but musical bands so top five musical bands if you think about right now okay judas priest is always up there mm -hmm. there's a german band called gamma ray which mm -hmm. is really good um there is um we need mike where's mike at he's uh that's all doing I a photo. Of mrd yeah there's a a japanese metal band called loudness and a guitar player named akira takasaki and he's <laughs> really really good and and very consistent like started in the late 70s and they're still making albums today mm -hmm. um man what else okay i need two more right <clears throat> 
let's see here. I love the fact that it's diverse. Like a lot of times people it's are like, wide, you know, yes. they, they go to the standard, like, you know, pop charts and it's like this band, this band, this band. And oh, like, yeah, there's yeah. diversity in this. So I like that. I'm going to check these are you ones able, out after. Can you take the decades and say, hey, back in the 70s, these two to four <laughs> guys are doing it. <laughs> 80s. Well, anybody in music is going to go back. I don't care what. Right. Same thing oh, with I our agree. hobby. Max, are you able to? Are you able to think uh, again? And, okay, we're not going to here to put you on the spot, but can you say, hey, in that era, these two or these two or three guys were like pushing the envelope. Yes, the music oh. level was here, but these guys were here. Then in the 80s, it was, and we and we see this progression. Of music uh, creators, kind of these guys going out on their own, maybe not following the trends of that particular era, but still they were just like, holy, and look at them now, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, there, there are certainly guys who, I mean, I, yeah, I can, I can think about different decades and who are the influ influential guitarists of those decades and that kind of stuff. And there, there are some guys like Randy Rhodes. Who died very very young i mean he was very influential mm -hmm. but it was really just because of the first two ozzy osbourne albums that he was on and then he died in an airplane accident actually right mm -hmm. interesting yeah yeah um so what's, what's, there's what's, always speculation what's, what's, about what what's, he would have gone on to do what's with musicians and airplane accidents that's all i gotta ask you <laughs> that might be a good segue to your next hobby right? no <laughs> I mean, talk, talking about influential people who died young, Steve Ray Vaughan was the same way. It's like once they got him off Coke and he was, you know, he was kind of starting to really rev up, not not peak in any, any means, but as soon as they got him cleaned up, I mean, he's just, what would have happened had he not jumped in the helicopter? Yeah, I was going to say, and how did he die? Helicopter yeah, crash. Helicopter, helicopter. Crash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. All right, musicians, buses, yeah. stay on stay the bus. On the bus, stay <laughs> on the bus. <laughs> no airplanes. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're no, Sam I, Hagar, because he flies in all, all around. I don't know. You guys ever seen the Stevie Ray Vaughan uh, Austin City Limits uh, show that he did? Which one? I Several. Yeah, the, so I the one he was coked up on, or the one that he did after he was clean, dude. I <laughs> if you ever I see Stevie Ray Vaughan playing with his eyes closed, all of those songs, nothing but coke. Well, dude, Austin City Limits was a huge influence. PBS, man, Saturday oh, nights, yeah. PBS, Austin City Limits, like Fish. I remember watching Fish on there. Uh, I, I, my first time watching Buddy Guy, and uh, he's one of my favorite blues blues guys. Buddy Guy on there, you know. Um, and then you have Stevie Ray Vaughan. So the, the Austin City Limits was just a, a huge resource of like expanding your musical like. You know, as a kid, right? I'm. I think I'm just like a. I think I'm a year younger than you, or a year older than you, Max. So we grew up the same era, and I watched PBS watching those shows. My dad was a guitar player, and then I learned from him. And uh, I made a truss rod antenna, just to let you know. So, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I had an Ibanez guitar that got bridge bulge. Yes, I said bulge on YouTube. It's uh. Already <laughs> monetized. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm sure we're gonna say worse later on. And so I, I wanted to get it fixed, and I, you know, you know, it's like every guitar you think it's worth more than what you what you actually paid for it. I'm like, yeah, it's like seventy hundred dollar guitar, acoustic. I'll get it fixed, you know. And they're like, yeah, don't even bother. So then, what I wanted to do was I wanted to uh, play around. I I cut out a section in the back of the acoustic because I wanted to take like uh, different woods. And do like an in, an insert to see how it would just like experiment with it, you know. Like if I change the back panel, I kept the bracing in there, but I made it so I can have drop ins and with different materials to kind of see how it would affect the tone of the guitar. And then I was like, okay, this is bullshit. So then I decided to make the truss rod antenna, and it did, and it worked well. I even put an amp inside there. It was really tight, but it worked. Now I got to put the strings back on. And then play, and then call CQ at the same time. And so when are we going to see this perfect. video, Daniel? Come uh, on! I'm You're sure I have. Worm. That would be that would be YouTube gold. <laughs> <laughs> Man makes a ham radio out of out of a guitar. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Jane, I want you to do a short on it. <laughs> right? Oh, stop it. Stand by. <sighs> Anyways. That out right quick. So after talking about all these amazing artists, so airplane. Now you're into you're into flying planes man like what a diverse amount of hobbies that you're into and so you're into airplanes 
What's the story with that? Well, kind of like a little bit, like I said before, you know, I, I built models when I was a kid and that kind of thing. And so I was, I, I did display models, you know, plastic models, and then also RC models and model rockets and that kind of stuff. I was just really into that as a kid. Um, so I was always interested in it. I had a grandfather, my dad's dad, who was an, a career Air Force pilot. And then it, I didn't know until later on, but my other grandfather was also a pilot, uh, but like a private pilot in the 40s, you know. Mm. And I had some aunts and uncles, or uncles, I should say, that were uh, either in the Air Force or related to aviation, that kind of stuff. But because of that, growing up, in my head, if you're a pilot, it's because you were in the military. That's mm. how I thought about it in my head, because the only pilots I knew had been in the military. Uh, and so I, it was like, well, if you want to be a pilot, you need to join the military. And so I'm like, well, I don't want to get shot at. So I kind of like, I, I guess I won't Good be a thinking. pilot. Right? <laughs> but it wasn't until much, much later, I, you know, I was originally from Seattle. I had moved down to Los Angeles. I had this really weird job working for an art gallery for a few years. And I met a guy there who worked at a shipping company and, th and they would ship artwork, you know, so it's like very carefully, you know, packaged and created and everything. And that guy was a private pilot. Hmm. And I'm like, wait a second, this is this guy works at a shipping company. He was never in the military. And that I was like, wait a second. OK, like anybody can be a pilot if they really want to. And so at that point, I'm like, hey, well, maybe I could do that. And all of this stuff kind of came together. The timing was right because it, it I really got into it about the same time that I was making the transition from working a desk job, working a regular job to being able to do YouTube full time. And then like, I was really excited about it, really wanted to do it. And at the same time, I finally had the freedom in my schedule to where, you know, cause you, you can't really do like night classes for flying. So I could go, you know, during yeah, the middle of the day to Van Nuys airport over here and, and do my, my flight training. And that kind of stuff. So and works. you are a brave man to be doing flight training at Van Nuys. That is a busy, busy airport. And I thought I trained at a place that was super busy. We have this place up here called Addison, which is close enough to Dallas that that's where all the business jets go because it's cheaper. It's where they don't have to fly into Dallas. Right. So when I'm, I, you know, I'm sitting here doing my instrument rating and, and I have like seven citations in line to take off. I'm like, I, what? <laughs> so very intimidating. So to do it, do a private, a private, pilot certificate rating there at an airport like that is insane so props to you man that's crazy thank you i mean as as you know the radio work is one of the most difficult you know yeah. talking on the radio that's one of the most difficult parts of, yep. of getting the license mm. uh and so obviously at that i mean i think it, it is a really good airport to learn at because i feel like it's just at the upper limit of what you can do as a student and not mm -hmm. get totally overwhelmed, you know, but there's still like a clearance delivery frequency right. and that kind of stuff. And there's two <laughs> runways and they have different frequencies, you know, for depending on what runway you're on. Yep. The other thing about Van Nuys though, it's not a nice town. So, <laughs> so it's kind of a bad area. I heard of that because right? I was, I was, I thought, yeah. you know, that everyone says go to Van Nuys. It's this iconic airport. Airport. Yeah. So I was in LA. Yeah. I was there for go like four or five hours. The airport. Don't yeah. Else so I drove there. over there, and as I'm driving over to Van Nuys, I'm like, yeah. Am I in the right burn too? <laughs> am I going to get stabbed shot? You know, am I going to yeah. end up make it back to the airport? But, and then I saw all these giant fences around there. They even have this like really cool area where you can go and watch the airport and watch the airplanes taking off and stuff like that. It's like, yeah. they have all these chain link fences around. And I was like, mm, okay. All right. Not going to stay long. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. Ago, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, co I'm confused. As a Canadian, is that in California, Van Nuys? Yes. Isn't that all of California? <laughs> No, <laughs> just just questioning. I'm just. It's worse than average. <laughs> okay. Than average. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah. okay. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But about about two years ago, uh, there was a you know police chase. You know they're they're chasing somebody in a car, mm. and the car like smashed through a gate or something, and was driving around on the runway at the oh, airport God. trying to get away from the police. 
Yeah, you know, you just like increase your charges tenfold, right? Like when you, <laughs> exactly. Like, Hit an airplane. Just, uh, that really makes bats, sense. Just bats, we're in hot pursuit on a runway yeah. four. <laughs> that just adds the domestic terrorism charges and all the other stuff. Like, yeah, exactly. I, that's the thing I don't understand, man, with those car chases. And it seems like you guys in the States have tons of those. I, I really, it's insane how many you guys have. Here it's like, hey, look, he's got a snowmobile. But <laughs> I, I, it's true. Look at him chasing a moose. <laughs> but, like, you know, these guys are, like, taking off. Like, I don't think anybody has successfully evaded the cops. Like, like even if they did, it's not like they didn't know their number. Like, well, we're, li- I, we're, li- we're living in the digital age. There's cameras all over the place. You're screwed. Why even start? Why even right? start? High, high speed pursuit of the Zamboni in Canada <laughs> is at what? 20 miles an hour? If even. <laughs> the, the best we can do. The, see, the thing with the Zamboni, we got a little bit of an advantage. We can make the roads icy while the cops are pursuing. So, like, you know, you don't have to go fast. You just have to it's make like them Bond. crash. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, think smarter, right? So, good. But, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal a Zamboni. Then. Yeah, I don't, well, I'm yeah. Telling you. take and you take, and you take it on the dirt road. And listen, at the same time, you're you're burning LP, so it's it's environmentally more environmentally friendly at the same time. That's perfect for California. You guys should have Zamboni chases in California. Yeah. I I don't even know if you'd have to put a sign that say this might cause cancer. Like you would be good. It's, uh, it's, it's going to work in your favor. So we're going to talk more ham radio stuff. In the meantime, our chat, I want you guys to uh, please put some questions in there that you got for, for Max. Any ham radio questions, music questions, anything like that. We are already put stars. We, ha- we have them noted here that uh, to, to bring up any questions that have happened. So post your questions. At the same time, uh, we're going to put the link for the Buy Me a Coffee link. You guys know the deal. It's all coming back to you, but uh, we want to build up for our next giveaway that we're going to do. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's our little advertisements that's going on. So buymeacoffee.com stroke whiskey Two hotel Romeo Charlie. It's a stroke, not a slash. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so uh, and then we get into ham radio, man. So we have already questions. What's your setup? What are you doing? I know Joe Brett has a picture of your setup here. Uh, Joe, if you want to share that, but um, there you go. So is this your home station that you got going on, man? Yeah, yeah, it is. So take the banner. Off. You know, I, I made some. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I will make many more rookie mistakes soon. But uh, the first couple of, you know, I, I the first radio I got was everyone's arch nemesis, a uh, Baofeng UV5R. Mm. Arch nemesis, and, that's a great radio. What are you talking about? Well, I, people seem to hate them or love them, right? Only on YouTube. That's yep. the only place they get hate. Okay. Because <laughs> when you go out and about and you go to the ham radio conventions or stuff like that, or you see people out, everybody's got one. That's Nobody bucks. ever says anything and to no you about it. <laughs> no one cares. I just want you to get on the air. Sorry to interrupt you. I don't know. It's just, yeah, I mean, that was the first radio I got. And I, and I would just, you know, I, I had that before I had my license. You know, I'm just trying to like figure out like how do you use this thing and this kind of stuff. And, uh, figure out like who can I listen to in the area, this kind of thing. And I was, it has a really, it, you can scan with it, but it's very, it's very slow, very right. slow scanning. Um, but it still kind of worked. And so there's a, uh, there's a club. I, so I, where I live is the San Fernando Valley. So you've got Los Angeles, you go over the hills, and then yeah, that's the valley, like Valley Talk, Valley Girls, this kind of stuff. And that's the San Fernando Valley. And so there's the San Fernando Valley Amateur Radio Club. And they do a, they do a couple of, they do like a simplex net one night of the week and then a, a repeater net later on in the week. And so I started listening to that stuff. Uh, and then I got, um, I got a antenna that I could plug, that with an adapter I could plug the, uh, the Baofeng into. And that got me out to where I could uh, I could actually I could actually talk to those guys and, and hmm. be part of the nets and that kind of stuff. It's like you know it's like maybe maybe five watts. You know that radio, right? On like, a good day, being yeah, being, being generous, <laughs> uh, right? Um, 
and then I got and then I got this this uh, QYT radio. Joe Brett's favorite radio. Really? The one hanging or one on top? One on top's TYT. The one hanging. Yeah. I've got that one sitting, or one just like it. I, I, it frustrates the hell out of me. I mean, do you like yours? I don't like it. No, I, I hooked it up. Couldn't figure out how to program it because the guy I got it from didn't give me the cable. And I think it's impossible from the, from the physical the radio. To, yeah. So it's just sitting over there in the dark. <laughs> Yeah, there's two. For me, there's there's two fatal flaws. One of them is the mic deviation is just garbage. Like you have to be like, ah, you know, you have to be like shouting into the mic. There's no mic gain at all. There's no mic gain. There's no way to adjust it. I bought a different mic for it. Same problem. Whatever. The other thing is you cannot do. You cannot scan frequencies. You can scan channels once you have programmed the channels in. Hmm. Hmm but you can't just sit there and run through the frequencies with it so no, i got man. it i had it for like a month i'm like this is terrible you know and so then i bought the tyt which is up on the top there and i love that radio i love that radio and that's is that dual band radio. yeah dual band nice uh two dual meters, received too. Meters. yep yeah it's really it's kind of like they just stuck two radios together yep you can do satellites um, with that thing you've got double <clears throat> controls on both sides cross band and it's repeat. like 50 mm -hmm. watts um 50 watts and 40 watts hmm. and i have uh, one of those sitting it. right over there nice. and then i got the um the power supply at the same time i got the tyt radio because the qyt radio i had one of those nasty like adapter plugs which i think was creating some noise and that kind of stuff uh and so now really i'm i'm really happy with you know the, the two on the top the power supply and the radio i'm really happy with that I've gotten really good reports of how the, the mic and the audio is sounding, that kind of stuff. And it's a little bit hard to see, but there's a silver box on the side. Yeah, on, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of behind that sc the scanner. Yeah, right there. That is an antenna switcher, but I've got it wired in, re in reverse. Okay. And so I can decide. I have one antenna, and I can switch it depending on which radio I want to go to, that kind of stuff. Oh, but nice. I, I'd, I'd love to get some advice from you guys on antennas because here's my situation. <clears throat> I live in an apartment. There's no balcony. There's no attic. And I'm not on the first floor, so I can't put anything on the ground. Hmm. So what I have right now is one of, one of these through glass antennas. It's for, it's for a car. So I have it mounted on the outside of my, of my window. I'm on a corner okay. at least, so I've got. I'm not like down in something. You know, I'm on. I'm on the outside corner, so I, the antenna is out of the window. I've got the through glass coupler, and then that runs into that switcher box right there. But I'd love to get. I mean, uh, you know, the antenna is 50 watts max. That radio is 50 watts. So I, I really, I got to figure out something for a better antenna. For for sorry, so for are we talking about the UHF VHF? Or are you talking about the uh, HF? Uh, UHF VHF for now. <clears throat> you could probably use a, uh, it's called an Edfong J pole, and they have a roll up version of it. Roll up. It's super flexible. Um, they're like 40 bucks on, uh, if you if you follow Ham Radio 2.0, he sells them in his store. Go to the um, Grapevine website. Yeah, go to go yeah, the Grapevine website. But there's a, uh, it's a grapevineamateurradio.com. He's a big supporter of the channel. But um, you can, there's two different models. There's one that you can slide inside of a piece of PVC tubing and set that somewhere and then the coax just plugs into that or you can just leave the the roll-up portion of it you can hang that you can hang that in the corner of a room somewhere and dangle the coax down and it's going to do fine on two meter 70 centimeter to penetrate the wall and stuff like that you wouldn't have any problems that way because you're going to get a little bit of gain off of that uh off of that roll-up j-pole so, so if you've even, got a and even if if i have it inside it's still going to you bet you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. it it itself, for if you put it outside, you can actually put it inside of a piece of PVC pipe, and it still transmits and and receives just fine. But that's okay. a simple and cheap option um, to keep you. You know, like I said, you could you could hang, you, technically you could hang it in a closet and then just run the coax along the floor and plug it into the radio. No one would ever be the wiser. Okay. Okay. Well, that sounds that sounds pretty good. I could do that. I'll check yeah. that out. Ed so, Pond. Do you have a balcony or no? He said nope. no. Okay. Okay. No. I tell you, I have. How about, to listen. How about a washing machine? <laughs> Seriously, do you have a washing machine or a dryer? No. 
I mean, okay. in the building, not in the apartment. So I can't. You know. The other thing you can do, and this is a poor man away of of of, of another op. Again, this is all about experimenting, right? Mm -hmm. Take a a dual band mag mount antenna, whether it's a quarter wave or a five five eighth wave, or actually a half wave would be great. Throw it on anything metal, a cookie sheet, a pipe, you know something. And, as, and then peek up to where the repeater that you want to talk to may be determined near the window. It, you, it could be somewhere even behind the couch, and you won't even know it. Right. Uh, that has always worked. Okay. Well, I think I think I think what you're you're pretty lucky was with is that with UHF VHF the, you have a lot of options as well as you can be creative, right? Right. Like it's not the same restrictions as like not the same criteria as an HF antenna. The length, the the grounding, all the other issues you can get away with a lot. I think with the UHF VHF. Like I remember, so I also had a just when I first started, I had a, a Baofeng UV five R, and I wasn't able to get into a repeater about ten miles away. So I just one of my buddies lent me a, a mag mounted uh, antenna. That was it, and, and I just stuck that outside and I just hooked up to it. And then I got a little, uh, like you, an amplifier that would, uh, you know, help me out, boost the signal a little bit. And I ran with that for quite a while until I did my permanent UHF, VHF vertical. So, but you can get away with just a piece of wire too, right? And so there's a lot of, you can, ex like, it's so easy to experiment with UHF, VHF. Like, I just so went to, options. so <clears throat> I just went to Jason's website, Grapevine, uh, amateurradio.com, and the Ed Fong will do up to 75 watts on VHF. So he, he has a 50 watt radio. He has to worry about turning it down. But, you know, again, you, I think you'll be amazed what a, what a J Paul antenna will do for you. I know I've used them <coughs> many times inside hotel rooms, not thinking it'll. Oh, God, ever here work. we go. This is embarrassing. This and this is that, my this is one of my this is an antenna. See guys, you have to real yeah, see I, I'm an antenna. dude. You're you're talking about you're talking to Max. Look at his room there. Okay, first of all, yeah. look at look at look at how it's set up. Right, he doesn't want to have a cookie sheet on the ground. What he needs to do is take an antenna, and he want he should make the truss rod antenna. That's it. That's what That's you should very do. True. Yeah. That's very true. <laughs> Max in, in our private you know, chat. When, it's on the right hand side. I put the link go. and then I also put the link to the roll of J Pole in the chat. Okay, cool. That's awesome. that's this is actually the one I, I made the trust rod antenna. So but <laughs> it works well. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> so anyways. You know, so I think uh, the option that Shane gave. Does anybody in the chat have any because we got so many crazy hams in the chat, smart people. If you guys have an idea for him. Uh, and uh, Jeff is saying that the N9 TAX roll up J pole can handle 50 watts, so that works out perfectly. And here's the one there. here's a, here's and, and Max, just like with your music and anything else, you know, when you start buying things, you say, How can I use it for other things? The J pole is something that you could use at all times, no matter if you want to go sit in the park, you, you throw it on, you throw it on your favorite on, on your HT. Uh, you know, it's it, a J pole you don't go wrong with. To me, it's a staple in every ham radio operator's, um, uh, what do you want to call it, bag of stuff that we carry. The tricks. Yeah. Bag of tricks. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with a J-Pole. And they're cheap. And they're You're cheap. cheap, and you can hang it with a suction cup. You can hang it with a piece of string. You can hang it off the dowel of the curtain. Off, if you're in the bathroom, off the curtain rod. <laughs> There's just so many. You, I, I see some stuff there in the background that you can hang it off of. <clears throat> it's, it's gonna work great. All right. Wilson's Charo and spread impression. I got a ceiling fan. Got got a <laughs> hey, as long as it's not on, you're good to go. If you turn it on, I'll bet you better make a video on it. <laughs> so. So I don't know if you said this. Are you a technician or a general? Me, a or technician. An technician. And working, ah. on, and working on general, right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> when you get ready to test for your general, let us know because our yep. one of our buddies here is on does online testing. Okay. And okay. we have a, we have a couple people that are VEs here. They will they can do the test for you. So when you're ready, just let us know. We'll take nice. care. Okay. Did you do your test online or in person? Uh, I did it in person here. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So we I got we got a couple in questions in my general in my general I did virtual I'd much rather do it. What are you eating? That is so loud. Sure. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, Sorry. Gonna, I'm gonna turn my light down here real quick. One second. Yeah, no worries. <clears throat> Ooh. 
please stand by for this intermission. <laughs> I need some good elevator music. <laughs> you know every what, Marvin? I... Go, ahead. Go ahead. I was just saying every time I took a drink, I, was... I don't have the handle like Josh has got. <laughs> right. So we got Marvin who's flexing a little bit. I got to say, he says, what was your first guitar? Mine was a Gibson SG Special. Jeez. Now that's a that's a flex if you you know. Yeah. But <laughs> like my first was radio going? was like the seventy six ten. Well, what was your first guitar, Max? Uh, well, my first guitar was one that was given to me by my uncle. It was it was some. I mean, it, it like I had never heard of the brand and I've never seen one since. Right? It was some department store kind of thing or something like that and it was um was it a citation no i think it was an Ar i think it was an arbor was it an esteban okay. no i have an esteban guitar though. <laughs> i have sam, an esteban I throw back to the hand, to I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the bar and there's the i'm thinking of the sam ash i'm thinking of the sam of the sam ash special but esteban oh my <laughs> God, you watch I wish I QVC. could remember. Uh, QVC, learn how to play guitar. Right. QVC. I got no idea what it was when I first got interested in, you know, as a teenager, I'm going to play the guitar, right? And uh, I had a great uncle that had been in the service, and he had actually brought back a guitar he got from overseas. Uh, I don't remember what it was, but I remember it had these, like, four or five big ivory keys, like switches. Oh, yeah. thing. I don't know. I don't even know what they done because... I didn't know nothing about guitars then, but I do possess some type of Ibanez, maybe a G10. Uh, I thought it was a lot of people's tried to buy it from me since I was a teenager, but it's remained in the closet ever since. <laughs> it's pretty. That's all I know. Let's let's see the value. Wilson, maybe I'll have Wilson, to. you should play some licks while we get them here. No, I'm good. <laughs> 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 I would, no, I sold my electric. I gave my my first electric. It was a. It was like we we call them up here clown guitars, which is just like a no name knockoff, like you know, like the the starter guitars. Mm -hmm. So my first electric was just it was an uh, it was a uh, Advantage electric, and okay. then uh, I still have that. My son took it, and I I did the old school, you know, like the stickers on it, right? It was caked in oh, yeah, stickers. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> And then my son took it and he peeled all the stickers and then he doesn't know how to remove glue and half broken stickers. And he, I was like, dude, let's take it, let's take it to the shop and we'll, 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 uh, we'll dip it, you know, hydro dip video. it. There you go. Video, you know, video right there. And he's, he's like, he's like, no, dad, I don't want to do that. I'm like, it's the coolest thing. Have you ever seen what they look like? He's like, no, I'm good. You know, so dad, you're so old school. I'm like, no, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> And uh, but I, and then I had a Gibson, and then I sold that, and I play pretty much acoustic now. So you're not gonna get any. I haven't played an electric in like 12 years, man. So yeah. my favorite guitarist in acoustic, well, one of them. There's a lot of them. You ever seen a Andy McKee? Uh, I'm not. You no. ever heard of you ever you ever heard of Candy Rat Records? Candy Rat Records. Oh. Anyways, it's all like acoustic guitar players, pretty much. And uh, Andy McKee is pretty oh. awesome. Check him out. That is my guitar. It's uh, what priced is priced at $130, so it's a pretty big deal. <laughs> yeah. but Have I'm you a, not watched Max's right. channel, Joe Brett? It's a beauty. Have you seen what those $200 guitars can do? I think Joe mine got, even has more dust than oh. that one. Joe got that value on Antique Roadshow. <laughs> right? <laughs> but that's, that's what I got. A Geo. It's an Ibanez Joe, Geo. Geo. Geo, yeah. Yeah. All my life, I've called it Joe, you want to... You know what the secret is, Joe? You go to the store and you buy a Sharpie glitter marker or white marker, okay? And then you just scribble on it. And then when you go to the pawn shop or you go to sell it, <laughs> you just say, oh, that was signed by so-and-so. That doesn't look like a signature. I said, dude, he was so stoned. You should have seen what he, like, anyway. The value has gone up like tenfold at least. Okay. Now it's like, worth that's, 225. It's the trick. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> now, you're like, Max Carlisle sign a man. Yeah. It's worth that there much. You <laughs> One of the most frustrating things is is anytime they have those like autographed guitars 
it's usually like a fender like a squire or so you know it's usually like a cheap guitar with like you know every member of whatever band you know every member of metallica has signed this guitar but it's the cheap guitar to begin it's with the cheapest guitar ever yeah <laughs> you know and then they're trying to sell it for like ten thousand or something and then we got Vern. and Vern's asking how did you learn to play school or self-taught i'm like 95 percent self-taught but I, I i've taken lessons from different people along the way here and there and it hasn't been like it, it hasn't been where I've had like one teacher who taught me for a long time, but it's like, I'll take a few lessons from this guy and a few lessons from that guy and this, and this kind of stuff. But most of it's self-taught, but honestly, there's so much information out there these days. It's just a matter of sitting down and practicing. Watching YouTube. Watching YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Is my video cutting out or are we good? You good. I feel like I'm lagging. You're good. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So, um, hold on here. There was another question. I just skipped away. Kyle says, did somebody say flex? Typical Kyle. Oh, I seen a question so. earlier, and I don't know if it got starred, but uh, Adam, K6ARK, was wondering if you had any interest in learning Mars code, Max, because musically inclined folks usually do pretty good with Mars code since it's mm -hmm. a rhythm. Right. Well, I do have interest in it. But these days, I just have to be really careful with more projects <laughs> and more things to do. I kind of, I have a, I have a bad habit of spreading myself very thin and yeah. mm. learning something. I mean, I would think of it as like learning another language, that kind of thing. And definitely, I would like to do it, but realistically, I don't, I, I don't think I have the time for it. Right. I think, I think it does take a lot of time concentration dedication because I've, yeah. I've tried and i'm interested myself but i learned my call sign cq and that's all mm. the effort i've put into it yeah hey guys so see i i there. associate ham radio uh, is that ham radio half is that yeah, what thank it is? you yeah. 1999 thanks man. Half, we, man. we appreciate it thanks for so the wait, 1999 more. yeah is there 1999 the infomercials come on man but wait there's more okay well, listen <laughs> you don't get those in canada so i like i like scout 75's uh comment where is that <clears throat> it just oh, disappeared on me he says yeah molson unplugged gordon lightfoot has nothing on him except a bunch of hits <laughs> true <laughs> very true yeah, I think if Max so, ever wants to come back and hang out, that we should arrange a Daniel and Max uh, flash the guitar off. off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm thinking? We got it. Do you remember I'm, my I, buddy Jeff who came on? Remember my buddy Jeff who was? Who, yeah, I mean, he, yeah. He 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 plays bass, and Jeff can do anything from. Where's Aussie Ham Radio? He's in the yeah, He plays the drums and guitars. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. We got a whole band, band going right here. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to sing, though? Gonna <clears throat> Joe Brett. Oh, yeah. Okay. Volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Brett. Joe, Joe Brett can rap. Gonna hum the hits. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Bre Joe oh. Brett still has a, a video of me singing uh, hidden in his archives for what? when we hit. Uh, uh, ten year or ten, no ten. What was it? A hundred thousand subscribers. That's what it was. We'll get K eight M R D to uh, to sing. <laughs> That's right. Oh uh, yeah. Didn't, yeah. Yeah. We'll get he's him. To hell, sing. He's and and he can play rhythm guitar. He doesn't play lead, but he plays rhythm. Right. He's pretty good at that too. And, ben, and, and he's really into metal. And Ben and, and Ben Williams is reminding us of Lord Cal, who plays mm. the drums. Play some nice Callum drums. from DX Commander. Yeah, play he's a drummer. Great drummer. So, so Max, you know all these people that we're talking about? No, Callum I don't. from D <laughs> so Callum DX Commander. He's got uh, he's very popular antenna for HF that he sells. Okay. He's out of the UK. He has a YouTube channel. Very smart guy. Very technical in some of the uh, propagation science and all antenna science. And uh, he does it down for you. Yeah, yeah. He does it down for you. If, if 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 we can understand it, you know. Exactly. It's pretty, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, K, K at MRD, he's, uh, he's, I don't know, he's got, he's uh, pretty uh, big in the radio uh, YouTube channel. He's got uh, K at MRD radio stuff, and he does a lot of poda and other things. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know who plays piano? 
Kyle. Alpha Zulu, Alpha Zulu. He plays. Okay. Who's the. Yeah, look at that. Shane and his dog. Way to go. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, there was another question we had here, but in this, at the, while we're waiting for that, I have a question for you, and I'm going to push some uh, Sad Ham's buttons here. You're in the music world. Yeah. Heil, micro, Heil Microphones. You ever heard of them in doing your gigs? How do you spell it? H E I L. H E I L. No. See, I told you guys. I told you guys. <laughs> I'm just telling you. He makes a really good headset and microphone for radios, HF radios. What about Presonus? <clears throat> uh -huh. See there. Well, you microphone, Mike. You're very well known. Yeah. Excuse me. Very prestigious. Two hundred dollars. Only the best people use those. Exactly. Look at that. Mike Potos with a Shure SM58. So. He said well, he has well, like thirty so, of them. So Bob Heil is supposed to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for microphones, which is what's up with Vern Six has. But I've said this before because Bob Heil is, you know, supposed to be very well known. But I, I worked in audio, you know, I did audio work for about three years, uh, you know, engineering on audio for live stuff and uh, being in the music industry, playing music with different groups. You know, I played with a gospel choir and all kinds of stuff. And I never heard of Heil microphones ever. Doing live, doing anything, never heard of it. It's you know, back you in the sixties, though. Dude, I, I was born in '84. No, okay, so do the Bob math. Heil. Heil, <laughs> yeah, probably. He probably, he probably brought things from the sixties into the seventies. That was what Heil's impact on on music. I think he. I think. Come a long I, way I think. Since then. I heard his microphone was used for the the Queen's baptism when she was born. So you know, that's mm -hmm. that that kind of dates it, but. <laughs> No, I'm dead serious. But you, know, you get like, you know, AKG, sure, you know, like all those other brands, which are really well known for live. And then you and then I've never heard of Heil. So just got to say. <laughs> so Plasma says you Heil mics are. Molson hates my Heil mics. I don't hate Heil mics. I hate people who beat their chest and say that they're the king shit over everything. I'm dead serious. They are. They are. Who is? Heil. <laughs> <clears throat> no, they're not. Oh, done, Come on. He done, done stepped on a nerve with his own. They, they I'm of course get I did. On, that's why I said. I'm going to get him on the show. I'm right. gonna, now you're going to. I have a couple. I have two guests lined up. Is Bob Howe one of them? He will be next. Okay. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be Molson and Heil having a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Fight to the death. I, yeah, I, I did Hyle. Joe Walsh's microphone. Nothing hell you did. No. <laughs> and Mr. Heil, here's your opportunity. What grinds your gears? <laughs> These damn Canadians. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> well, we're, we're past Anyways. the hour. So, Max, if you need to go, you said you needed to scoot after an hour. You're welcome to stay as long as you like. But I just wanted it for those that... It, um, if you if you had a question we hadn't got to it, Max has to hop. If he has to hop off, I'll let him decide. I'll we'll do, put, put I'll your do like five more minutes. Okay. You know, yeah. if anybody right. has I listen, guys, questions. we have yeah, to you do got questions. Put them in there. While while they're putting so, the questions, dude, let's do this. Let's get this guy nominated and get him a member of the clubhouse. Oh, that's very Ooh. true. Somebody's so, got to make a motion. I'll take the I'll take the first motion. We need I'll a second. second it. There we go. All, All in favor? favor. Uh, All right. All right. All right, Max. So you know what this means now. You're a member. You can come back anytime. You hang out. You you got even if you got nothing going on. You want to just hang out in the chat. You want to come on board. You now listen. A couple things. How much are the dues? It's uh, very. Just it's, wait till you get the PayPal it's very, link. You'll, you'll it's see. very very affordable. It's caught <laughs> okay. up a few times, but <laughs> inflation. <laughs> inflation. <laughs> All right. It's not inflation resistant. We talked about your favorite band. Your favorite modes. Your favorite snack. What's your favorite snack? Ooh. Barbecue chips, I'm sure. <laughs> Don't go there. Don't go there, my friend. So I'm a peanut I'm peanut butter guy. I'm a peanut butter guy. Oh, so there you go. anything with Reese's in it is just nice. count me in. And they've got these pretzels, which are like the pretzel it's, bites. Well, it's they're They're coated with, oh. with like the peanut butter coating on the pretzels. Those yep. are just like yeah. Perfect. I'm with um, you. Oh, you've got rapid fire, I guess, is it right? Yeah. Ice cream. Fa uh, favorite ice cream? Peanut butter, peanut butter chocolate. Peanut butter chocolate. Oh, wow. There's in a, a bowl, in a bowl ice. or in a cone? Uh, you know, if I've if if I have time to sit down. Yep. 
a, a waffle cone, a waffle cone, a waffle cone. Wow. Yeah. 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 Um, check in six. I swear. Thanks so much for the $20 super chat. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thoroughly enjoyed you being on the show. Looking forward to checking out your channel 73. If, Thank uh, you, Vern. So, Vern, if you got to go, thanks for uh, joining we us tonight. It, You're the best. And the last rapid fire question for you, Max. Okay. Chicken, steak, or fish? Uh, steak. I'll go steak. And how do you like it? Medium. Medium. Okay. There cool. you go. See yeah. how easy it is? Like we're so, like we're, it. we're, we're so easy around here. Yeah. <laughs> And Molson doesn't bite, so you, you... so Bean asked a question, serious question for Max. Do you like barbecue chips? I love barbecue so, chips. Is, is, oh! you, <laughs> is, so do you want to explain the inside joke? Why, why you know, the no, no, where this came I'm, from? Because it's really, no, really out there. Because there's not enough cough drops in my hall's <laughs> bag tonight to stop me from coughing, and I'm upset so, with Bean. <laughs> so, so Max, the story is, um, someone. He Izzo expressed on the show how much he did not like barbecue chips, and one of our lovely viewers decided to go to Amazon and ship him a box <laughs> of a hundred packages of of barbecue chips. James <laughs> Linden, James, James Linden, he yes. is, is a good friend of the show, but <laughs> now everyone is sending me, and anytime they can crowbar in something about barbecue chips, and I like barbecue food, but just not barbecue chips. Do, are, do you do like Cool Ranch, or what do you do? You know. Oh, I like Cool Ranch in the blue bag, but that's not barbecue, though. No, so, that's what I'm saying. Right, so right, instead yes. of barbecue, you like... Yes. Well, okay. Oh, yeah. The the blue bag? Absolutely. Oh, so you're uh, a Doritos oh. fan. Oh, yeah. blue, But mm. it has to be blue bag, though. It can't be the red bag. Oh, the cheese is the best. No, it's not. <laughs> you wake up in the morning and your fingers, fingers are yellow. And your yeah. pants oh. got stuck. Yeah. And, the do- and the dog's <laughs> looking at you. <laughs> The dog knows that they're good. That's the exactly. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> See the problem. The problem with this conversation internationally is that we don't have the same candy as you guys. We barely have the same chips, like Doritos. Everybody knows it's the same, but but I don't know if the recipe's the same. That's the thing. Let me let me say something here on, on when it comes to snacks and candy and that kind of stuff. In my opinion, the USA has the best candy. Period, and it's because a lot of the ingredients are outlawed in other countries <laughs> it's true. You, you go to you know if you get you get like european cookies or something like that they're hard and it's all like crumbling all over you and this kind of stuff because there's some secret sauce that we have here that you know it's like a it's like a, a dangerous chemical in other countries <laughs> yeah, no, we're just, we eat it all day long yeah. but I, like, I, I get into that again and again survive it yeah, yeah but Scott you know the worst thanks for the super chat uh, the worst part is like a craft dinner. My buddy works at a plant that makes craft dinner. You guys have craft dinner there, right? KD? You know I've that? never heard of it. Is no? it a TV See, dinner? They, they, no, it's it's a box with like those macaroni noodles and there's like a, a powder of cheese. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, craft dinner. Mac and cheese. Yeah, yeah. Cheese. Yeah, yeah. Cheese. yeah, yeah. So that powder before it gets powder processed, cheese, yeah. before that powder gets processed at the plant, it's, it's a major carcinogenic. And so they have to wear like hazmat suits to process it, right? <laughs> and I'm like, he, he, he's, he's explaining this to me. They have to shut down the plant because of some ventilation issue. And he's telling me about how it's That's severely how carcinogenic. And I'm like, dude, we eat this shit. You have to wear almost a hazmat suit. He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, what are we? Seen, what are we doing? Oh, so good. No. Have so you good. seen how explosive powdered coffee creamer is? Oh yeah. Put look that up uh, on YouTube. Uh, then on opening about, it, on exiting. You talking about that? <laughs> talking about that cheese? I ordered it by the tub off of Amazon. Really? No way what? I can put it in anything. Yeah, what for? Yeah. yeah. A powdered cheese? Yes. Wow. Oh, my my arteries are clogging just talking about it. <laughs> my COVID just got scared and ran out of my body. <laughs> You're welcome. There was you've a, been healed. A, there was a pie. <laughs> There was a pie that I used to get get because there's a company that makes these frozen pies that you get at the at the grocery store and it, Edwards is the name of the company and they have different flavors of pies and this kind of stuff and they had a peanut butter chocolate pie mm. that you could get but at first you could buy it any time and then it was like only certain times a year you could get this and then like certain times a year and only certain stores 
and it kept getting more and more scarce. And at one point I was, I'm like, what's going on with this pie? Cause I love the pie. And I called the company and I'm like, can I like buy these pies directly from you? Right. They're like, yeah, but you know, there's a minimum order of like 2,500 pies or something like that. So <laughs> wow. But now I can't get them anymore. And this is like, this is one of my major complaints in life because I've loved this pie for like 20 years. And for whatever reason, over, over the years, they've made it less and less and less and less. So now you can't even find it anymore. Right. You said it was Edwards? Where's this at? Edwards frozen pies. I yeah. wonder if we have them here. That reminds me of my breakfast pizzas. You know the little deep dish, I don't know, the Red Barons. You can get the two-pack. Sure. Like six or, you know, they have a wonderful breakfast. You can get it in bacon or sausage. Wow. Breakfast pizza. And they went away for years. I used to eat them as a teenager. And then my wife found them at a local grocery store. So we started buying the heck out of them. Now they're gone again. Yeah. I don't know where to get them. But that's 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 the thing, though, is even like major brands today, they change. Like I remember Tim Hortons, right? We all know Tim Hortons. They changed their coffee, right? Why do you ruin a good thing? Yeah. Like that's the biggest thing with brands. They ruin a good thing for what? Did they, a couple have, a cents? Did they have a good reason to change it? Or <sighs> I don't know. Now they go dark roast and it tastes like i don't know tastes like earwax so you have to ask for the regular blend so anyways like earwax. I, it does i still take i still drink tim hortons i just by default they'll give you the dark roast and they don't give you the regular so you have to be like i'll have your regular coffee how would one cream. know what earwax tastes oh. like <laughs> oh come on to compare, <laughs> to compare it to something else in life guess what i'm gonna mute my <laughs> I got, I got, I got nothing to hide. Everybody who is past ten years old knows what earwax tastes like. I'm just saying that, and you guys can all be like, "No, I don't." You do, okay? <laughs> is that that's it? The, is that your? No, that's the chocolate cream. That's the chocolate cream. See, oh. you you don't understand. I have researched this so much. <laughs> you can get, you can get. They've got like a lemon meringue. They got chocolate cream. They got, I don't know, like an Oreo. There's a ton. Like that. But if you guys can. Seriously, if you guys find chocolate peanut butter Edwards frozen pie, I would be forever grateful if you guys can find it. But. So Clubhouse, we're fund we're raising funds to buy twenty five hundred Edwards <laughs> green pies. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, we should become a distributor. <laughs> it's, it's not on their website. <laughs> Bean, thank you for the super chat. Happy to love happy you love barbecue chips, hey, Max. That's from Bean. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, guys, we I should this. I should get out of here, but uh, is there any any last minute stuff? Or otherwise, I'll I'll head out. Well, while we're waiting on last minute stuff, Max, thank you very much for answering my email. I really didn't expect it. I'm like, this guy's probably got an agent that's going to throw this email <laughs> away, and uh, but I I had to try it, um, especially after my confession uh, at the start of the show. <laughs> I will say, uh, I was listening to your playlist of solos. And I realized I had to cut it off so I could work on my own music and videos. Uh, it's kind of distracting, but it's good stuff. Oh, we appreciate you coming into the hobby. We appreciate you coming and joining us tonight. Uh, I hope you still like us a little bit and don't think we're even more weird. Uh, so <laughs> we're just the hangout show for the week. Well, I, I'm glad you did email me. I mean, this was great talking with you guys, and uh, I, I had a lot of fun tonight. And I'm going to check out that Ed Fong antenna you guys were, were talking about, too. So it's Yeah, I think that'd be a good option great. for you. I, so do I. Yeah. You can uh, Max, Max. Look, us, look us up. Uh, the email addresses on our, on our own pages or on this uh, channel. And send us a message anytime if you got questions. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thanks a ton. Yeah, thanks for joining thanks us. For and uh, links Max, to all I have, of Max's I have a question is, for you. Uh, I have a question quickly. Okay. So listen, the clubhouse is working on a very serious project here. Um, we are trying to become lords of Sealand. I don't know if you know Sealand. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sea very <laughs> but but Sealand is this badass pirate radio station in the UK. The government yeah. was going after him, and he pretty much took over a World War II outpost in international water. Okay. Oh, this if you look at it, fantastic. Hundred percent. And so, for twenty nine dollars, we could register something like that. Lords of Sealand. We try to register the Ham Radio Clubhouse as the Lords of Sealand, uh, and they refuse us. Right. 
So my suggestion, if you ever decide to film a music video in Europe, I would love to be a roadie for you. And we should we should do it at Sealand. And we'll, be, we'll, we'll bring a shit ton of stickers of Hammer in your Clubhouse. And we're just going to take over the island. Like, that's how. Like, Guess where we're going to put him? We're going to put him on the bow of the boat while right? he's playing. Oh, yeah. And we're going in. We are going it's go in, man. Could you imagine yeah. that? The boat going across the water with him at the front, and we're going yeah. to war? And all like, the rest of us are hanging over our sides, peeking I'm our guts you. out. Schwarzenegger be on his cigar up, up, up in front, and, and I and, and I told you all the old guys are all gonna be there. All the badass oh, Texas God. Walker Ranger, all of them are gonna be there. Stallone, yeah. but we're putting Max. We're, I don't care. You don't mess with the old guys. You don't. But you put Max at the bow. You have to use a walker to get up there. I don't care. He'll whack you with his walker. <laughs> all right, Let's Max. Well, <laughs> Max thank <laughs> thanks you. for joining us tonight. Thank you, man. Take care, buddy. Anytime you like. If Welcome you to Ham Radio Clubhouse, man. Reach out to us. We're here for you, buddy. All right. All right. Thanks a ton, guys. Take yeah, care. Take it easy. Bye. Bye. Yeah, so you can check out Max. We're going to have the link. Uh, Bean said, where can I hear Max music? We're going to have a link in the description. It is already uh, there. It's there, and uh, really awesome, and uh, super awesome to have him on. What a what a well, nice guy, sincere nice guy. Portfolio, huh? oh yeah. yeah. And I thought I had hobbies. Man, this yeah, guy. Yeah, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Aviation, cars, rock and roll, shoot. Good stuff. Craig, Craig's saying, uh, say a prayer for me, bros. I've been very sick, need a break, so I can get an operation. Eleven, eleven. Well. We're we're rooting for you, buddy. Absolutely we're rooting for you. Correct. So Absolutely if anybody correct. in the clubhouse prays or whatever, keep Craig in your prayers, guys. Positive thoughts. Absolutely. Yeah, Craig's been uh, very active on the channel. So. Right. Absolutely, Craig. Go What's up with Six? Does uh, does he have a Twitter channel? A Twitter account? He does. I was just about to try and find. Uh, I got it. The handle. It's there. It is. So go right ahead. There it is. Let's Burn. Do that. So there's his website. And the intro music tonight was an unreleased track that's coming on his new album. He uh, sent that to us so that we could play that as an intro tonight. And the video was from one of his other videos, and I kind of mashed them together. So I apologize if it didn't look good. But, you know. No, that was very nice of him to do that. That was very nice of him to do that. And if you like uh, reviews on on gear and stuff, that's his uh, his his main channel is on uh, gear reviews, guitar, and just listening to the guy play. Like the intros to his videos are top notch, and the audio, shoot, are you? What are you chomping on? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna mute my mic. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, do we want man. to uh, throw out the link for tonight? We got some time here. Do you guys want to fire up the radio? Maybe do some HF stuff. I'll leave it up to you. Uh, let's put the yeah, link on. I've got, got some people back. in the clubhouse. <laughs> How much quieter it is when he mutes. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <He's got> a... <laughs> what? It's I so much quieter <laughs> when you don't jump on your mic. What happened? <sighs> I put the link and it got kicked off. What's going on? Oh. You guys see the link? Yeah. Yeah, I just oh, posted go. it. All right, guys. So come on the show. Let's hang out. Please have your audio and video sorted since we are limited on how many people that can hop in. So if your audio and stuff's good, you're uh, jump on it. We're here. I can't I can't FT8 in the background. I'm not cool like Joe Brett, so. Somebody wants to do that? Well, no. I mean, but I'm just saying, you usually are, have got FT8 going. Propagation was good today. I was uh, all over 10 meters and 15 meters this afternoon. Had Banger Main from Texas on 15 of all bands. Hey, Ham Radio, Ham Radio QRP, first time in the... Uh... On the club I was watching us, he says, or they say, cool show tonight, fun stuff. My first time in the clubhouse, and it was fun. Well, thanks for coming, man. Appreciate Kevin it. is, that's Kevin, and, uh, and Kevin and I started a, an initial conversation, and we'd like to get him on the show sometime soon. He's doing some really cool, fun stuff in the hobby. Fun stuff. 
So guess what? We're hoping to get him on here. I just, we, I gotta just look at some dates. So, and a couple other people too. And I'm also gonna add Bob, Bob Pyle now. That'd be great because I'd ask him if he had my QSL card. <laughs> I, oh, did you send Plas- me a QSL card? Plasma Storm didn't like my comment. He was sending me all <laughs> kinds of messages of like, <laughs> <laughs> listen, just saying. My my, it's my truth. Okay, it's my truth. Let me be. <laughs> Let it be. Let it be. All right. Let it. Be. Welcome, Ben. How are you, sir? I can't, can't hear, hear you. you. Yep. Dun 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 dun. Oh my goodness! Look who we got here, Ben. It looks like you muted yourself. Mm-hmm. And then when you've unmuted yourself, it's not, it's not following through. You need to Don't go to your it. settings. Make sure yep. your microphone. Be a, it'll be a setting in there somewhere. Hey, Bean. So I'm going to pop you out for a second and then uh, sort that and then come back to us. How are you, Bean? Bean. I'm good. Ants passed out on the couch, so um, I'm in the bedroom right now. <laughs> oh, that's what happens. We, we knock them Whoa. out and we go play radio. <laughs> Right. What's new with you guys? I can go play radio. I got I got lots of radio. <clears throat> I know you do. So how you been, Bean? What's new with you? Can you hear us okay? I can hear you okay. It sounds like my audio is delayed. Uh, you'll delayed. probably have to mute the stream. Mute if YouTube. you still have the stream up, mute, mute YouTube. Or just shut it down. Shut off YouTube. Look at, look at all these rookies with their microphones and audio. and. <laughs> Molson, you shut should go to their house. house. Molson, you should start a business. <laughs> Molson, start a business. How Let's to get see on. if that's better. Oh, all right. Yeah, is, that, is that better? Can you hear us live now? Go wake up again. Okay, there we go. All right. No, he looks in- so peaceful. Like I, I don't have show a him. Wake show up. him to us. Show <laughs> no, him to us. What does he look like? What, what does he look like? Joe, what does he look Joe like? Brack, get ready with it. Can get everyone with, be really ready. quiet for a couple seconds? Be quiet. Oh, so we can wake him. Okay, no, 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 hold no. Don't wake him. But get a sharpie. Don't. Get a, get a sharpie mic. Get a sharpie uh, uh, marker. Let's just draw oh. some guys. Right, I think here. he woke up. Just just Uh-oh. go cam. Just go <laughs> HRC. There's no sneaking up on him. Good morning, sunshine. Good morning. <laughs> Come on. You got to get up. Doing? What are you doing to me? Satellite, satellite IO23 is coming over at 55 degrees above the horizon. Let's go. <laughs> so I can I can show you guys my uh, satellite gear. And so we, we found a good way to make contacts. How's that? Uh, oh. So this is this is my vinyl room and my messy shack, which I think every shack is kind of messy. You should I don't know how to flip next. my camera. I would show you. <laughs> my daughter, uh, she got the bright idea. We we went for my blood drive this past weekend. That's right. Congrats. And uh, really nice. can I flip this camera? Let's see. Oh, nope. I just turned off my camera. No, I can't flip the camera. She got a lovely idea to label everything for me. She found Anne's label maker. She was bored. So. That's my HF mic. My satellite mic. There you go. Oh, look at that. I can peel off all these stickers. My radio. Nice. Um, My monitor. Uh, th- there's some that probably are appropriate to show on the stream, but, so I'll leave those ones out. But yeah, this this is my my little spot. I don't know if you can now, see it all. Now, do you have like a, a setup that does that tracks those satellites? Yes. Um, so what I have for that? what's called Sat PC32. Okay. That's and is there like the is it like a physical like rotator on on the on the antenna mass that does it? 
Uh, so when we go roving, we use a Yagi antenna. I don't think okay. I can, don't know if I can just, turn on the light enough the for you to see outside. You can use the arrow, right? The use the arrow, arrow antenna. Right? The arrow antenna. Let me see if I can actually see the antenna outside. I don't think. Oh I God, think it's, it's too like dark for you guys. Blair, yeah, look, she, she's watching the, just like watching the Blair Witch Project. Stop! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> don't go into the woods. Don't, don't go in the woods. <laughs> don't we, go we into that cemetery. cemetery. So, <laughs> can you see this pole here uh -huh. that my hand is on? I don't know yep. if you can see I it. See the yeah, reflection yeah. of it. Yeah. Uh, so it's that goes race. up to an antenna that's about twelve feet off our roof. Okay. And the antenna will auto spin with we have a what's called a Leo Sat pack. Oh, there you go. That's what I was looking for. The Leo yeah. Sat. Yeah. So it's the, it's the Leo Sat pack. It's too dark out there. I can't show you. Um, but we we did videos on it and stuff. Just gonna make sure I lock my door so no squirrels try to come in or I thought that was cat. a car wreck. <laughs> I was about to say, I heard a screeching <laughs> around. I was, like, I was like, oh, you better duck. <laughs> well, I almost drowned. Uh, so on Saturday, Sean, for Parks on the Air event, Sean and I went to Mini Island again. Great point. And he Great. put me in the car, or I got in the kayak and he pushed me off, and I was trying to yell to him, I'm tipping, I'm tipping, oh, look, look, even Mouse. Mouse. And for the guys who <laughs> for, for don't know, Mini Island is located here in Connecticut. Yes. And it, you, you got the big, uh, you got the big Poda Park, nice park, and then in the middle of this huge, huge lake is Gardner Mini lake. Island. Right. Gardner Lake is the, is the Poda Park. Well, huge. But inside this body of water that has some tides is an island. And they've gone out in the winter, and now they've gone out in the fall. They've gone out in the, what, the summer, I think. So you guys are, are hitting it good. Yeah. We, well, the first time we went there, we walked across the ice. And I honestly, I felt that that was easier because I didn't fall in. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think I'd rather eat barbecue potato chips. But go on. Right. <laughs> so... <laughs> So Sean pushed me off the shore. We were also with a woman. Her name is Storm. She's also another ham radio operator. And we were with Anna. And when he pushed me off, I was trying to yell to him, I'm tipping, I'm tipping, I'm tipping. But Ant was far away because he was moving the truck because we brought all the kayaks. Because Ant is videotaping everything. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I honest to God, I wish he was because he would have <laughs> saw me. But I have to say, I'm very thankful Sean was standing on shore because had he not, I don't know that I would have been alive today. Oh my God. I, yeah. So when, when my kayak, I, I was trying to tell him I was tipping and I was trying to jab my little thing into the water and like push the rocks to get closer back to the shore, it wasn't working. So I tipped over, went fully into the water, but because I had a life vest on and the kayak filled up with water and I couldn't move my legs because I had a cooler of sodas in between my legs, I just, I couldn't, there was, there was nothing I could do. So he had, he ran into the water Clothes, he didn't think twice. Clothes and everything. Pulled me out of the kayak and oh brought goodness. me to shore. Thankfully, well, I brought dry clothes. <laughs> Flotation That's... device was barbecue potato chips. So once again, barbecue <laughs> potato chips saves the life of a woman now. Right. <laughs> and what else did we learn? We don't put the radio gear with bean. That's one no. thing that I forget. <laughs> although, although I will have to say, I did have my iPad and my iPad keyboard, which they're not cheap either. Mm -hmm. I had a, a pretty expensive iPad and keyboard in my little compartment in the back. They didn't get wet hmm. because it, it, it has a good, really good seal around it. Right. But the middle of the kayak where I was sitting... Totally full of water. Oh goodness! Yeah, it was it was a fun experience. Well, now you have a story to tell. Yeah, 
Fun, fun stuff. Yeah, no oh. kidding. Well, oh, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna be going to the egg. We're gonna be going to the egg factory, and we're gonna be bringing Bean with us. Right. I'm liking all the labels here. <laughs> I keep, I th- keep finding Thankfully, more. we're in Mich- like Michigan that. control, so we got that astronaut under control. Jeff, how are you, buddy? Jeff, good evening. Doing all right. How you guys doing? And we're gonna try Ben again too, as well. But, all right, Ben, you want to give us a shot? Hello, hello, hello. Hey, there he is. There five nine. Both nine. five nine. Welcome. Well, shoot. I've got to step away for one moment. So, Jeff, where are you located? I'm in eastern Tennessee. And you're, you've been a supporter here for what? Uh, a while, I think, right? Yeah. I've seen your name pop, um, almost yeah. uh, a year, maybe. J- Joe Brett's probably seen me more than oh. he was. <laughs> At Huntsville, yeah. You know him? Yeah. You, you know him? The <laughs> first time I met Jeff was Huntsville 2021, and he had this huge Yezu box that he was toting around, very proud of. Yeah, it's nice. over there. <laughs> nice. Nice. Hey, yeah. Jeff, what do you like? What do you like? HF, VHF? What do you like? UHF? What do you like? Oh, I'm a, I, I, you, you name it. I like it. I, I am definitely a Yezu guy, though, if you couldn't okay. tell. And uh, high power, low power QRP, 100 watts. What do you like? 100 watts. 100 watts. 100 yeah. watts. And what antenna? Uh, I've got an NFED half wave. I actually have the, um, uh, the one that's made by, uh, N, well, it's NFEDs, but, they they're owned now by um look at bean <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> what is that a roku remote <laughs> that says probably roku on it <laughs> um no uh yeah i've got an nfed that's made by nfeds that uh viberplex owns them now and viberplex is in knoxville so which i'm just outside of <laughs> label everything huh label the world <laughs> look at her <laughs> but um uh, yeah, I like doing HF. I actually worked. Uh, I actually uh, got on Ole Miss last night on forty meters, which you know. So I I got my I got my two numbers, and now I already got a number. I found them about two. It's funny you said that. I found them about two weeks ago. What a great, great, nice guys. Very. Yeah. Oh my God, the hospitality. I was just running QRP, and I didn't think they were going to hear me, and it it like. Guy sent me an email with the link. I saved it. Yeah. Um, but nice again. This is what I love about our hobby, man. Oh yeah. I don't. I don't care where you are. You know. What I mean, we just sometimes you get the nice. Hey, listen, I know every once in a while we talk about the the people who we who we don't care for. You know. Sad hams. Yes. That, <laughs> and we'll just and let tell you what. Let's just leave it at that, and we don't need to promote any right. more about what they do and who they are and whatever. But that is really such a very, very small percentage. Oh, yeah. And sometimes, and sometimes they get too much airtime, whether through social media, here, whatever. But Ole Miss and a whole bunch of other guys are having fun, and we appreciate it, man. It's fun. It's fun oh, working yeah. these guys, man. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, and I've, I've been familiar with them for years. I, I'm actually – I've had a number for, uh, for Triple H since 2014, mm-hmm. which is another one of those 40-meter – Yep. Uh, uh, night owl nets <clears throat> and um uh you know i'm number 940 on that one and now they're well well past a thousand so excellent um, but um but that i got that took me 25 years to get that number <laughs> oh no, man wow. took me took me two contacts and 10 bucks so you know <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it, but, you know what? It's, it's lots of bucks. Lots of stuff. Uh, yeah. Oh, somebody's got to mute that stream. Oh, everybody got to mute. Everybody mute. Who's a rookie? Oh, somebody's got to mute that stream. Everybody got to mute. Oh, everybody mute. OVF. OVF done. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Is it plasma? <laughs> uh, it's, it's done. It's done. It's OVF. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 It was that Mercury amp in the background. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I totally forgot about that. He, he, he keeps, he's going to send me one of them, right? Yeah, exactly. He, you going to buy me one, Don? No, but Jason's got one. He he'll, he'll send you a picture of one for free. Yeah, we, we talk all the time about his DX Commander, but that's a that's a $3,000 uh, part right there. We had right. That I got feedback from somebody. Somebody. 
my volume's off. I'm, I'm going to mute one at a time until I find it. Plasma Storm, is it you? Oh, where'd you go? Oh, you clicked the wrong button. I was no, muted. I didn't. So, um, I came down here to talk about Poda. Well, do it. What we got? So, what do you, so what do you guys think about the controversy? What what's the controversy? is it the is it the late shift versus early yeah. shift fighting? The late shift, <laughs> yeah, where they they change the late shift times. Now it's local based on local. It's only what up till midnight. It's from, from like, yeah. Let me pull really that up. Well, well, Molson, you, well, Molson, yeah, what well, do you well, think, well, Molson, what do you? Think? I heard. I heard controversy, and I was like, "Shit, I gotta get back on, back on the stream." <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I just I, found out about I, this I, today, I, so I, I need to I need to know what what it, what is this whole late shift issue? Okay, they, I found it. Let me pull this up. They've changed it from UTC time to local time, and which makes on. sense. Yeah, and then they're they're they've shortened the amount of time that. Local shift, or sorry, late shift actually works. I think. I think honestly, let's let's conquer this one thing at a time. So, Shane, do you want to read or go through that quickly, or just leave it as it is? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you, how well you can see it on the stream, but it, basically, the late shift is a six-hour period, uh, beginning at twenty hundred century it's twenty twenty hundred UTC. And it, it's what's confusing in there is it says plus or minus one hour for each fifteen degree longitude. Stop right there. Stop right there. Right. That's, that's your time up. zone. But that's just right. your time zone because that's right. ever the time zones are based off of off of fifteen degrees uh, from from zero. So just it's right. it's based off of your local time. So does that not make sense? Like the guy who's overseas in the UK and it's you know eight o'clock in the morning when we're ending our day, you know you're not going to do a late shift midday. You know what I mean? Like that to me yeah. makes sense. Localized, based on you know. What would be considered in your area late shift? That to me makes sense. Yeah. So, I, is this for, an, for a spe specific award? Is that what they are? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen. Two, you get a, so, a late things. shift and early shift awards. And Ham Radio you know, Adventure Guy, you if go. you guys don't follow him, he's going to have a whole stream about it tomorrow. So nope. make sure you share the link to that if you haven't already. And James. once again, and once again, we have got to say nobody should be getting upset. Right. This is yeah, this is a hobby. You have a bunch of volunteers working working behind the scenes who let me tell you something. We couldn't even do one one tenth of what the volunteers do right behind the scenes for, 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 for parks on the air. I understand social media gives everybody, you know, these keyboard warriors a uh, uh, a soapbox to you know whatever, but tell you what. But guess what though? At the end of the day, it'll be all right. Because you want to know why? We're still going to get on the radio and have fun. Fun. And there you go. And I don't an F bomb again. And me, and me personally, I don't care if I work James at Zulu zero 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 one or four hour. I don't care. Yeah, I, don't, I don't care, man. I'm still going to work the guy. And I'm still going to work me. What do we just, care? And despite what Jason Johnson thinks, I am still going to come on. And if I'm in a pileup, I'm going to go park to park, park to park. When the guy calls back to me, that's when I'll give him my call sign. You don't need to say your call sign park to park. It's not necessary. <laughs> well, that's like saying contact in the middle of a conversation. It's my gears. Well, it's like saying please copy. Really? No, no, no. But like, 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 how are you supposed to break into a conversation on a repeater? You're supposed to say, like, here we say contact, right? And then you wait, and they said, oh, there's a contact coming in. You're like VA three SDO. Right. Yeah, but that's, that's not how, how pilot works. I just throw my no, 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 out. no, no, no. But like you're saying, poda uh, park to park is mm -hmm. your quote unquote contact, right? You're breaking no, in. You no, don't no, have to do no, a whole no, service. No, no, that's not. That is my call in the. That is so that I get the attention in the pileup of the guy that I'm trying to work. Okay. What 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 is he saying not to do? So can you clarify that? Because I don't see that, that written down. You should down. always give your call sign first and then park to park. No, I won't do that. Park to park. I don't do that. I don't either. Well, I don't know. I stay parked apart. Yeah, there was. And by the way, this Shane, I didn't. Did you see that on Facebook? That big no, long, no. like hundreds of people replying. Nope. But yeah, I, I didn't. I mean, to me, that's not even a controversy either. 
what difference does it make if you put your call sign and then park the park? It's my activation. I'll do what I want. Yeah. <laughs> the guy yeah. tuning up, the guy tuning up over us isn't giving his call sign. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. That's right. When you don't, you don't have to at the beginning of the transmission. Just once every ten minutes, and at the end. Yeah, correct. Ooh. Thank you, Jeff. If we're in the U.S., in the U.S. Yeah, that's right. That. Everybody does it. Everybody does it differently. And guess what? It's up to the activator to pick and choose how he wants to run his pileups, who he wants to work. If he's got to do a last call for whatever the reason, there's a lot of situations. I think a bunch of people are just getting their panties too, or their yeah. coax too tight. It's too, <laughs> too tight. Oh, yeah. Everybody's yeah, got to yeah. relax. Your antenna now. wire is way too short, sir. Your it antenna happens. wire is good. That's right. I've been a ham long enough. I've seen, I've seen, and I've seen clubs split apart. I've seen. In fighting, yeah. I've seen this club oh, yeah, fighting yeah. with that club. You name it. When I first got licensed in nineteen eight in nineteen eighty nine, about six months, nine months later, I joined the new club. Actually, it's the club that I'm president of now. Yeah. But two P two PL or not to PL was such a huge oh, God. debate. These guys, really? and one time in the park a lot, they were fighting over the uh, the hood of an SUV. Mm -hmm. it, it started it started in the business meeting it went done and they were so heated up that as they were walking out words were said and then next thing you know they're in the parking lot going having the great debate over the hood of the vehicle <laughs> to pl or not to pl and, and 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 i just shook my head yeah i said i don't believe us but i guess we're humans and some people take it very personally and <sighs> decide what hill they want to die on and so forth so yeah i've yeah. been a ham long enough that i actually heard people on the two meter repeat <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so I don't, are people they are dead on you. are people really upset about the um the uh late shift time changes yeah yes. is that bothering them yes oh yeah, yeah. How, why why they're all spun up because because they're used to the way it was i i Change. honestly i don't but know but it makes it makes no difference to the hunter. Yeah, but see if you may, yeah, it doesn't. But if you are really that can, I mean, I, I guess I can see that. Oh, well, but, you know, I've got my schedule all set. That's about what, the only thing you could say is that. What was the old rule? Um, it was based on UTC only. Uh, no, but see, see UTC. only I'm going to be yeah. honest here. All, like the only people who are affected are just, a, in my opinion, you could take offense to it, are, are selfish people who don't think of others. Right. The world, the world yeah. does not revolve around what the U.S. is doing in my time zone here. Like it makes no sense to do an, a late shift at eight o'clock in the morning in the U.K. And if anything, you're limiting people's abilities because when you do a day shift, you have up until say six p.m. or whatever time late shift starts, so you can go to work. You can head to the park and do a day activation, and then you can do a nighttime late shift activation. Right, right. But by making late shift work on UTC, you pretty much cut out a whole bunch of other people in time zones from being able to actually try right. to do the late shift. Mm -hmm. Right? Because yeah, because right they're on. at work, right? Or unless they're retired. But, yeah. you know, like, it just... And, and because it doesn't make any difference for the hunter, it makes a difference for the award for the activator. What's, what's up with getting your panties in a bunch? It makes no sense to me. It doesn't yeah. make any sense to me. Uncoil yeah. your, your coax. Yeah, I, need to, I need to pause for one second. Sure. I've got to dip out early tonight. i got to be up for uh, work early in the morning. But I wanted to say thank you, everybody, who hopped on tonight. Mm -hmm. Joe Brett, those eyes, come on. Man, we just got you back. <laughs> Is that puppy know, dog eyes? Yeah, I, I, puppy I, dog should, eyes? I should be back next week. I, I, believe, I believe I'm still off for, for next week. And but, Shane, uh, I'm... I, I'm really enjoying the balloon stuff. Man. Well, thank you. It's I'm gonna hopefully crazy. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a YouTube video maybe tomorrow out of it because okay. we're gonna do a training flight tomorrow. But yes, I will be back next week. Um, the week after I won't be because I have to work a PM that night. But I'm gonna say 73 and uh, dip out. You guys enjoy. Bye, Shane. Bye. Uh, Seven three. Can I ask Joe Brett a question? Yes. All right. Shirt color. It looks great. And then vinyl, I was thinking this color. I it's love gray. gray. I like it. Okay. That's like all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speak, speaking of Poda, 
A uh, mm-hmm. bunch of friends of mine are going to activate Kilo 034 this weekend, this Sunday. Mm-hmm. And Kilo 034, for those who don't know, is Smoky Mountains. So they're going to activate the Smokies. Um, they're looking for 11 a.m. on the 23rd. So what is that? Uh, 3, oh, 300, or that would, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, three, no, no, that would be, uh, 1500, 1500, yeah, 1500 UTC, so, so, yeah, if you need the Smokies, they're going to be on there, I've got a bunch of friends of mine, um, so. are y'all, y'all taking a bunch of radios, or just one, or, um, I don't know if I'll be able to go out there, I tend to work on weekends, mm-hmm. but, uh, it's called Potapalooza, it's their second one that they've done. Okay. And uh, they're gonna do um, they're gonna do voice FM and sideband, so they're gonna be probably activating two meters as well, which as well as six meters, ten meters, and a bunch of HF bands. So um, yeah, last weekend or or actually this weekend, whatever you want to call it, uh, K five RWK my club went out and activated a park, um, and there were three of us out there with radios and we were on different frequencies, you know, throughout the, we were out there about four or five hours, had an absolute black. Oh yeah. Well, the first, you know, one of the clubs that I'm in that I actually am their webmaster for, um, the, uh, the way I got into the club was I heard this guy on, on five, two and mm-hmm. it was, just, you call on CQ on five, two. Right. And I'm like, man, this guy must be like right, right down the street from me because he was, you know, Max scale on my radio, right? So I come back to him. Come to find out, he's up the mountain. He's like, <laughs> you know, he's like, he's like fifty miles away from me, and he's and he's literally blowing my socks off on two meters. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> so, with know. a bow thing. Well, no, he and what's funny is he had been working. He had been working Poda all day. He had been uh, doing Poda, maybe soda too. And uh, he was actually getting ready to pack up, so he was just on on the rig, and he was like, "Well, let me give a shout out on five two and see if anybody's left, you know, if anybody hears me." Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, I'm in the club. <laughs> so, but that's how it works, man. You know, that's how you, that's how I met people here in Tennessee because I'm from Orlando. I grew up in in Orlando, so you know, my that was my stomping ground. You know, I I knew all the repeaters down there and. You know, Central Florida, and uh, you know, worked uh, worked all states from down there. Of course, you know if you move more than fifty miles away, guess what? You get to start over again. Yeah. Right. So. Do well, well, Jeff, I'm about uh, four hours northeast of you. Okay. Right. So, Up uh, eighty-one. Okay. I'm trying to think. Um, I'm near in Ohio? Blacksburg, I'm Blacksburg, Virginia. Virginia? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm still, you know, like I said, I've been in Tennessee going on three years. Um, my wife loves it. so And and I'm only three hours from Huntsville. Um, what, four and a half, five hours from Dayton? Xenia, whatever you want to call it. So, you know, which when you're down in Orlando, I, I, I've been to Hamcation more times than I could count. But, you know, it, to drive uh, to drive to Dayton... You know, which this year was the first year I got to go to Dayton uh, since I've been a ham. So three decades, over three decades, and I haven't, you know, that was my first first trip to Mecca, if you will. Mm. But when it was, I had a blast. Mm. Hanging out with the YVY and, and uh Don, you didn't. We didn't. We didn't catch you out in Huntsville. You didn't make it out there this time. No, I, I, my my work schedule right now is crazy, and so I didn't even try. Uh, I have talked about doing it next year. We'll see, but it really depends on because for some reason, like the last half of the year, it's when they really they really crank everything up. Yeah, and, I know the uh, feeling. Yeah. We'll see. I I hope so because I need I I need some time. <laughs> Plasma, you're being quiet, man. What's going on? Mm-hmm. I'm are, just are listening. You, are, are you taking the Joe Brett role? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't sound like Hank Hill, so I can't take that role. No, but if oh. you sit there and say nothing, that's exactly what. It does. Hey guys, I gotta hop out here. Everybody have a Is great a, evening. Appreciate you, everybody. Good evening, everybody. 
Seven three, as I say. Seven three. Who are you done? Seven three, Izzo. How's it going there, Douglas? Good. Yeah, how can you hear me? All right. Uh, okay. Hear you okay. Oh, my goodness. We have Ariel Rodriguez. I, Ariel, a Rod in the house, guys. The mad genius. Man, I haven't seen him in forever, eh, Joe? Yeah, for real. The, guy, the guy's yeah, MIA. Uh, I think uh, the wintertime of getting back in the garage, he'll start getting his mad scientist skills up. You got the fishing, the PBJ antenna there. My goodness. Anyways, guys, so we're coming up to the top of the hour there. So we'll go around and just uh, say a couple words before we uh, say 73 this evening. What a great show tonight was. Fun to have Max on. And uh, it's exciting to see new people come into the hobby. Obviously, it's not the first we've seen this year. But uh, three months into the hobby, hopefully he'll go for his general. And uh, really cool to have him on. And uh, But anyways, let's go around the horn here. Uh, we'll go to Bean. Bean, what do you got coming up, man? Uh, right now, I am currently making t-shirts. <laughs> I don't have a vinyl cover. Uh, I'm making Joe Brett's t-shirt right now. It's gonna, it's in reverse, but I've got a vinyl cutter. My heat press is warming, and then I've got cake cutting. Uh, so that's what I got going on right now, uh, but, uh, I'm thinking about a trip to Maine to do some uh, parks on the air in September, or November, not September. It's already past September. In November, I'm thinking about doing some parks on the air. Bean, is that vinyl, like standard vinyl, or is that special t-shirt vinyl? Uh, so I've got... The reason got why I ask is because... It's pretty, it's like, I, I wore mine tonight and I tell you it's, it lasts like it's. So I only bought, a, like, I don't know if you can see all these colors here yeah, yeah. that I'm going through. Uh, so that's, that's my t-shirt vinyl, but I also have, well, Sticker ignore vinyl. my Mandalorian wall. Cause you're going to probably see the baby Yoda. Uh, but I've got different little things that I can cut out. Uh, and Joe Bratz, I just finally, uh, looks like it's done. I almost fell on a freaking stupid thing. Uh, but it's all cut out. But I, I use a heat press to press the shirts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I press them once, let it sit overnight, and then I press it again in the morning, and then I press it again 24 hours later just to make sure I get a really good press on it. Oh. So you cut so, it backwards, but is the adhesive not then going to be facing out? No. So when I, it, it is cut backwards, but it's because the way you lay it down, this is the sticky side. So when it lays down flat, it will cut the opposite way. Or it will okay. like print the opposite way, like on the shirt. Okay. If you give me two uh, minutes, I'll have it. I'll have it cut out. All right, sounds good. Don, N five SKT man, how are things with you? How's Texas treating you? It's great. It's getting cold here. I mean, it must have yeah. gotten down to like sixty degrees. <laughs> and, uh, but it was thirty two last night here in Tennessee, man. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to get back up to like ninety. Uh, just a quick question: Any of you guys on nine hundred megahertz? Nope. Yeah, there. No. We we've got a 900 megahertz repeater. I'm thinking about it, but I've been thinking about it for a year. Um, it's supposed it's supposedly real easy to do with a Kenwood TK981, and mm -hmm. I know a bunch of people in the club have all the software for it. So uh, I think I think it might be fun to do something new nice. so that, that's kind of what i'm doing I, other than that i mean i've done poda and i've i've got a couple of radios but you know i i mean like last yesterday i was working from 6 a.m in the morning until past midnight my time uh 
meetings and all kinds of stuff. And so when you have days like that, there's hardly any time to do radio. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Intro. Ben, what's going on with you, buddy? Work, work, work. Well, I can say that in the last two weeks, I've had two VE sessions, and we had uh, eight candidates that got uh, ended up with five techs and two generals. So, oh, nice. That's so. That's what's what I've been doing lately, anyway. Very cool. Well, that's awesome, man. Thanks for volunteering and uh, doing the. Uh, the testing so yeah and douglas what's going on with you buddy what are you working on by the way i'm just working on some my uh emails and such but also i'm uh we're going to uh, activate a park in north of phoenix in, on november 11th as well while uh josh okay. and i'm out working on stuff we're doing a camp out in california very interesting. Your mic is is uh, is pretty muffled, so yeah. But uh, that's cool. A Kate MRD is in the house. Mike, uh, I made contact with Mike this evening, and uh, he had a good signal coming, a pretty decent signal. I don't always hear him, but uh, very good to get a contact yeah, he, with him this he evening. He was booming in Mississippi earlier. I muted myself and made contact with him. Mike, I told everybody in the chat, so I mean, yeah. we tried to send him yeah. to you. Hey, if he's on 40, I'll jump on there and get him. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was. He was on 40, 72, 44, was it? Yeah. But yep. I don't know if he's still doing it. What about you, Plasma? What's going on, man? Well, um, I actually have joined Racy's, Aries, CERT, and I just got approved today for the Mars program, and I start training for that tomorrow. Oh, nice. Oh, awesome. Are you going to get a, a, a police badge and a belt? And you, no. <laughs> I'll find you on, I find you on a police uh, a police uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> they have one. They, they have a badge that says ham radio operator on it, don't you know? Uh, yeah. I'm serious. We had got one guy at, a, at an event that had it. I got to see this. I got to Google this. That's serious. just absolutely ridiculous. And, and and where you might have a badge number is call sign. Yeah, it's your call sign. Is it like look like a police badge? Yes, it does. Oh, that is. It looks that's just, just like a police oh. badge. Metal, everything. I'm yeah. looking at it. That's just wrong. That's just isn't wrong. it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> takes all kinds, I guess. You can get your custom engraved badge, pricing $69 for gold finish, $69 for silver, and $130 for silver with gold panels or gold with silver panels. Wow. Oh, there's one place that'll actually do the, the different colored enamel in it. Oh, they'll do the enamel, too? Oh, wow. Yeah. So you can have your state symbol in there and all that other stuff. That was like 250 bucks for one of those. These people are not. I, I, anyways, I could say so much, but like, come on, like, what's the point of that? Like, what's the, like, to make it look like a bat, like a real police badge? That is just so. The only people that get those are the people that are either sad hams or want to feel like they have power, even if they don't. Mm -hmm. Want to be. Well, and no yeah. offense if somebody in the chat is uh, it has one of those, but you know, no. it's it's the problem is, is that people look at a badge and they they it's hard to distinguish between like all the different you know police forces and you know and, and so it, you look at that quickly. Whoever's radio uh, is on, we hear it. Um, that was you, you look you look at that quickly, and somebody would think it's a police badge, right? And so it's just I don't know. Whatever. Don't put it in your car, okay? Yeah. If you have one, I mean, leave it in your drawer at home. Like a wall display or something, but 100%. not something to yeah. carry around. Yeah, yeah. No. You're, no. you're uh, increasing your safety risk. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't take it to an yeah. income event. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry I've seen that. 
Oh my goodness. Anyways, uh, Jeff, buddy, what's going on with you, man? Well, let's see. Uh, I'm already doing Aries stuff. I maintain the website for our local county Aries group too. Nice. And of course, I like I said, I got a bunch of buddies doing that photo activation this Sunday, so that'll be. If I can get out there, maybe I will. But uh, you know, anybody else, you know, if you do, if you're big on photo, look them up and hit them up. So I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Um, nice. Ole Miss thing, we already talked about that. That was kind of cool. Uh, I'll probably get on there uh, tonight and uh, maybe do Triple H net uh, at 3 a.m. local time when they get up on 7190. So um, that's it, man. That was good. I, I really enjoyed uh, uh, your guest earlier. I thought that was kind of cool. I'm glad to see. Always need more metalheads in the in the, in the hobby, man. You know, I thought it was just me and MRD there for a while. So. Yeah, I was kind of uh, disappointed that MRD uh, missed out on that. Yeah, he's busy doing that POTA stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Um, we'll forgive him. Joe Brad. What's going on with you, Joe Brad? What's your, uh, you got all these shorts coming out and. Uh, I'm going to take a break. I'll take a break. Mm -hmm. um, you can't get, you can't give it all, uh, put out all your merchandise. You yeah. Know, at one time. It has been, it's been fun though because of the, uh, I purposely, so YouTube's got the new short thing on the mobile or newer where you can make shorts from your previous existing videos. So I purposely went through and, and done a 15 second clip of, you know, leaving you hanging at the end of the 15 seconds. Yes. So I've been getting a lot of uh, comments from new viewers on the shorts. It's like, man, I can't wait to see what that's like. And I'm like, click the link and it'll take you to the full video. So, but it's been fun. But yeah, I'm gonna chill out on it for a little bit because our announcement page on Discord and the Toes Discord, and I'm sure people's like, "My God, another short." <laughs> but I got an instructional video that I'm gonna try to make some sense out of. Shows you, uh, I'm not even gonna give a hint on it, but mm -hmm. it's fun for me, and I think some other people might find it interesting. I just gotta make it make sense to other people. Mm. Ben, I'm. Uh, I just turned on 15 meters. I don't know. I'm gonna see if I'm hearing anything. Uh, what's going on here? Am I hearing anything? I don't think I'm hearing anything. Yeah, this time of night. Just static crashes. Anyways, guys, I'm super happy that we had this show tonight. Thank you everybody for watching. Thanks for all those who gave super chats. If you gave any, and you buy me a coffee. Thank you so much, the whole clubhouse, and our viewers appreciate it. And uh, guys, have a great week. Everybody stay safe. And uh, hold on, I got to hit, get ready to hit that button. Ah, where is it? All right. 73, everybody. Everybody say 73. Great to see you, everybody. 73. Have a good night. 73. 73.